Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to this Enabling Observability with Open Telemetry talk. My name is Mauricio. I work as a software engineer at Kinfolk. This is my social network data, just in case you want to reach out. Uh, Kinfolk is a small company based in Berlin. We offer services for Kubernetes, container, process management, also for Linux user space and kernel this is the those are the different uh, handles on social network and email of the company just in case you want to know more about it okay in this presentation i will show you the concept of observability and will give you some details about distributed tracing i will give you an introduction to open telemetry and will present how to use open telemetry for instrumenting an application in that, I will present you the OpenTelemetry API, what context propagation is. I will also show you how to use instrumentation libraries, how to set up the different exporters. And finally, I will give you a demo about everything combined together and how everything works. And then I will show you the concept of automatic instrumentation and will present you a demo about that. So let's get started with observability. Observability is a mechanism that allows us to answer the question, how is our system behaving? There is a formal definition that comes from the control theory that says that observability is a measure of how where internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. Mm, this definition could be not that relevant for the software. So we could say that the, for the software world, uh, observability is about getting information about the state of the system without having to chip new code to the system, without changing the code of the system by observing its outputs that are tracing logs and metrics. So there is a system that generates some information, some debugging information. This information are the traces, logs, and metrics. And with this information, we should be able to infer how the system is behaving, if there is any problem, if there is no any problem, if everything is going good or not. The observability is traditionally based on three different pillars. Those are logging, metrics, and tracing. Logging uh, are a series of timestamp event messages. I think most of us are familiar with that. So the most typical example for that is that we have a server and the server generates a file with uh, the events that are happening and when those events happen. So with the login, we are able to answer the question what and when something happened. This is the more traditional way of performing debugging. Uh, metrics are a numeric representation of some data. It allows us to answer the question how much. Examples of metrics could be the numbers of users connected to a system, the quantity of run memory that an application is using, the speed of a transfer, and so on. Metrics are anything that you can represent numerically. Tracing is the last of these three pillars. Mm, the tracing is a representation of an end-to-end -end transaction. So tracing shows how a transaction is performed, how a transaction is processed by all the systems from the beginning to the end. And it allows us to get a general overview of what happened. So it allows us to answer the question, how did it happen? Because it offers this complete information about how to, uh, request how a petition is performed, is processed by the different systems. So in this talk, I will con concentrate on tracing. I will present you the distributed tracing concepts and all the concepts about open telemetry I will be talking will be specific uh, for tracing. Okay, so what distributed tracing is? Uh, distributed tracing is a mechanism that allows to see how a transaction, how a request is processed with, from the beginning to the end. It shows the different systems that process the transaction. An example of a transaction could be when a client opens a web browser, the transaction then goes to an HTTP server, then this is HTTP server uses a database and so on. So distributed tracer allows to get the whole picture of how a transaction is processed by the different 
uh, systems. Uh, this distributed tracing gives information about what are the different services that are transferred by the request, for instance, the HTTP server, the database, an authentication service, and so on. We get information about what is the time spent on each service. So, for instance, we could see what is the service that is causing the biggest impact on the time required to process the request. And we also have information about what are the parameters of such, such specific requests. For instance, what, what is the URL, what is the query performed to the DB, and so on. And also, what are the parameters of the service processing the request. Distributed trace, tracing is composed by three different elements. Those are trace, span, and attributes. So a trace is the representation of the whole end-to-end -end transaction. It is composed by one or more spans. And again, the sample of this will be the client that opens a website and what happens there. The span represents a single unit of work. It contains some metadata about the operation. And it also contains information about when the operation started and when the operation finishes. And an example of uh, an span could be a query to the DB. Uh, the attributes uh, is the information that is contained on the span and it gives the context to the span. So let's say that the span represents a general operation like a query to the DB, but the attributes define what that operation is. So we can see, we can have in the attributes, for instance, the URL of a, an HTTP request. We could also have the query that was performed to the DB and so on. So the attributes give the specific information about what the span is. This is an example of a trace. In this case, we have the, a trace that is composed by four different spans. So generally in the traces representation, the time goes from the left to the right. And we can see that the span A represents the main operation. So it was the first operation in this trace. We can see how the span A invoke uh, another span B operation that also invokes a uh, span C operation. And after that, we can see that there is also a four expanded operation. So each span is representing a different operation and the whole trace is representing uh, the whole uh, transaction. So we can see here that the operation that takes the most time is the span A and the relationship between the different operations. Uh, about the relationship, we can see that the span A is the parent of span B, and span B is the parent of span C. So it allows us to keep track of what is the operation that is calling other operations. OK, let's continue with OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is a set of libraries, agents, and other components that are used for generating and collecting telemetry. Uh, OpenTelemetry supports metrics, traces, and logging. The logging is still being developed. OpenTelemetry is the union of open tracing and open census projects. So as a bit of history, there were two similar projects that have overlapping functionalities. And they were creating some confusion because the same scope that they have. So they communities of those projects decided to combine the force and to create a single new uh, project. Uh, OpenTelemetry is going to be the next major release of Open Tracing and Open Census. What it means is that there are not going to be more releases of Open Tracing and Open Census, and they are going to be deprecated once OpenTelemetry uh, is generally available. So why OpenTelemetry? So, there was a not clear standard for observability. There were many different projects, many different tools, but no one of, the, of them was a standard. So OpenTelemetry tries to be a standard for observability, and it tries to, de, to, do, do, to do that by being an open source project. In this case, this is a sandbox project of the CNCF, and this is a shared for by most of the market-leading com companies. 
Also, OpenTelemetry provides a vendor-neutral API, so it avoids the vendor lock problem. The architecture of OpenTelemetry is composed by an API, an SDK, some exporters, and bridges. So the API follows the OpenTelemetry specification. The OpenTelemetry specification is the ones that tells how the API should work on the different languages implementations. Uh, the API is the component that the applications of the third-party libraries uh, using OpenTelemetry should interact with. So we can see here that there is an application that there are some libraries and those libraries interact with the OpenTelemetry API. So the OpenTelemetry API is the ones that allows to generate telemetry data within the applications of the libraries. It can be used without any implementation what it means is that if you are using a library that has support for OpenTelemetry, but in your application you don't want to enable that support and you don't want to support OpenTelemetry, the library should still continue to work. What is going to happen is that this is going to happen, uh, this is going to use a uh, minimal implementation that does nothing. So the library continues to do the calls to the open telemetry, but those calls are not operation calls. So the SDK is the uh, ready to use implementation by open telemetry. So open telemetry provides the API and provides a default SDK implementation, but uh, different implementations are support. So if there is a, any company or any, any, anyone else wants to create a different implementation for the SDK, they can do that. And the API allows to use different implementations. So here we can see that we can use either the SDK implementation or we can use any other available implementation. The only thing people implementing the uh, other implementations have to worry about is that they have to be compatible. We have to implement the full uh, OpenTelemetry API. The SDK includes the concept of exporters. So exporters are component for sending the traces, also the metrics and the logins to another system for process and storage. And the bridges are compatibility layers with open census and open tracing. So these bridges are something for making the transition from open census and open tracing to open telemetry easier. So if you already have an application that is using any of those open census or open tracing, you could block this application to a bridge and the application will be uh, use open telemetry. What it means is that you don't have to modify the instrumentation on your application. You just can continue to use your application without almost any modification. The architecture of open telemetry is designed in a way that it are separation of concerns. So the library developers only have to depend on the API. So they only have to worry about importing and using the API. The application developers have to worry about uh, importing and using the API and also an implementation. So what is important here is that the library developers doesn't know anything about the real implementation. They only worry about the API, and this is the application they want choosing what implementation to use. Also, different monitoring vendors should, should maintain their own exporters. They don't have to worry about uh, the API and so on. There is a clear defined a interface between the exporters, so they only have to worry about implementing the exporters. Okay, so what is the status of the Open Telemetry project? This is called in Beta. This is going to be general available already soon. By end of the year, it should be reach that milestone. And once the Open Telemetry GA, Open Census, and Open Tracing will be deprecated, so. There are no new features there, and they will be in a deprecation mode. The SDK is implemented for the most important programming languages. You can see the list there. We have support for many of the existing programming languages. Some of the support in some programming languages is more mature than other ones, but the goal is to reach general AA by the end of this year. 
there are also exporters implementing for most of the vendors out of there. Okay, so what is implement instrumenting an application or instrumenting a library? So when somebody says instrumenting an application, he mean it is he is meaning that this is using the open telemetry to generate telemetry data in this application or, or library. So what do you need to generate telemetry data with open telemetry? What do you need to understand? So you need to understand the open telemetry API. You need to understand this context propagation concept. You need to understand the instrumentation, what the instrumentation library are, and you need to understand the exporters. These two are only important if you are uh, instrumenting an application. I will show you these concepts next. So let's start with the Open Telemetry API. So the Open Telemetry API is the piece that allows to generate telemetry da data in the libraries and in the applications. The main concepts of Open Tele of the Open Telemetry API regarding tracing are the tracing provider, the tracer, and the span. So the tracer provider is an object that allows us to get a tracer. And the tracer is another object that allows us to create a span. Once we create the span, we have this span object, and this object allows us to start the span. So starting the span means that an operation is starting. So when we call a span that start, we are capturing the time stand of that operation. Uh, once we have started the span, we can set some attributes in the span. So the attributes is information about the specific operation that is being executed. For instance, the URL of an HTTP request and so on. Uh, the events are also information about what is happening while executing that operation. The difference between events and attributes is that events are timestamps, so you can know exactly when the event happened, and the attributes doesn't have any uh, timestamp. Uh, and the other operation you can perform with an span is to end the span. So at this point, you save the time span, the time stamp, and you s this is to say that the operation is complete. Uh, this is just a quick summary. You can get the full list of the different uh, elements and their documentation in the Open Telemetry specification. So this is an example of how the Open Telemetry API can be used. In this case, this is done in Python. So the first thing we have to do is to create an instance of the tracer. So once we have the instance of the tracer, we can create the span. So for instance, we are going to create this my operation span here. We start the span. In this case, we can set some attributes for the span. This is just an example. And here is the real code that does the operation. After the operation is complete, we can end the span. So what is important to notice here is that the span is started before doing the operation and the span is sent after the operation is done. So we are able to trace, we are able to see the long duration of the operation. Okay, so let's keep going with the contest propagation. So the contest propagation is a mechanism that allows to keep track of the current active span. So when you have uh, an operation and you start a span, this span should be marked as the, as the active span. So what it means is that if you create another span, the new span should be the child of the already existing span. So what it does is that it allows to have this parent to child relationship and we are able to construct the full trace based on the formation contained on the span. There are two different kinds of contest propagation. The local means when the operations are performed in the same process, and it could be either be manual or automatic. And the distribute contest is used when the operations are performed in different applications, in different processes. So for the local contest, we have the manual case. So the, in this case, we have an object that saves the current span, the correct span, and this is the responsibility of the user to pass this object uh, in the different functions he is using. 
This is this approach is used in all languages that doesn't support the automatic contest. And we can see here an example. So we have these two different operations. We have food and bar. So in the food operation, we create an instance of the contest. And when we start and span, we pass the, the contest to that function. So what is going to happen here is that this function is going to return a new contest that contains the food span as active. So if there is a call to a further operation, we should pass the contest to that to that function of to that operation. So we pass the contest to the bar operation. And in the bar operation, we start another span in this case, and we also pass the contest. So what is what is going to happen here is that the implementation of this function understands that the contest has foo as the active span. So this is going to say that bar is the child of foo. And then later on, we are able to reconstruct the full trace using this parent to child uh, relationship. The other case for local contest is the automatic contest. In this case, the contest is implicit hand and handled by open telemetry. What it means is that you or the user doesn't have to worry about passing it around. And unfortunately, this is uh, available in some languages. This is available in some languages because it requires some special features of the languages. This is implemented something like saving the contest in a global variable, but this global variable should be local and independent for each execute, execution unit. So if you think that there are different threads within the application, each thread should have your out contents. So different languages have support, have some features to support this. Uh, Python is one of them. So this is the same example as before. In this case, you can see that there is no any contest there. We are just creating the span, we are starting and ending the span, we are calling the bar function, but we are not sending the contest. What is happening here is that when the span is, is, when the span is created and started, it is marked as active automatically by open telemetry. So once the bar span is created here, it already knows that there is another span that is active that is full, and it is able to say that full is the parent of BART. So everything is doing automatically. The user doesn't have to worry about that. What is nice about this approach is that you don't have to modify the function signatures in order to add this uh, parameter. Let me go back a bit. On the other hand, in the manual case, you have to modify the functions to include this contest parameter because you have to pass the object around. Okay, the other kind of contest is the distributed contest. This one, even if the operations are performed in different applications, they have to be aware of the current at span on each other. Mm, there are different implementation of this distributed contest based on the transport protocol that is being used. For instance, if this is using HTTP, the context is sent over the HTTP headers, and there are different specifications for that. If you are using gRPC, there are also implementations for that, and so on. The users can configure what is the specification or what is the implementation they want to use. So this implementation, we could say that in the local case, the context is safe on a, on a variable that is present on the memory run. Uh, for the distributed context, what we have to do is to send this context over the wire, maybe over HTTP or over gRPC, but this has to share with another process. Uh, and this is done by these different uh, implementations. Uh, the open telemetry instrumentation libraries do that automatically. What it means is that if you are using an HTTP library, for instance, that is compatible with open telemetry, this HTTP library is going to take care of that, and this is going to distribute to propagate the contest automatically. On the other hand, if you are using a, an, an HTTP library that is not compatible with open telemetry, you should worry and you should uh, take care of propagating the contest by yourself. Okay, so we can see here how it works. So there is a client. The client is performing this food operation and is creating the food, this food uh, spam before uh, calling the server. 
the server and we have the server that has this bar operation and that is also created this bar span. So the problem is that the client is going to call this bar function and so how we have to relate this to different spans. So we have to, to say that food is the spar is the parent of the bar span. So how it works, so when the client performs the request to the server, the information about the current span is included in the headers of that petition. So in this case, we are including the trace ID, we are also including the span ID, so the server will be able to understand that this operation is part of this trace and that the parent node bar is this span. Then, after the operations are completed, both the client and the server are going to report the spans to a remote collector and then the collector will be able to uh, construct the full trace based on the information provided by the client and the server. So in this case, we can see that the collector is able to understand that the full is the parent bar and is able to construct the trace. Okay, the other thing you have to worry about when instrumenting a, an application are the instrumentation library. So, unfortunately, not all libraries have built-in support for OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is a new project and many libraries are, doesn't support OpenTelemetry yet. And there are also some libraries that won't support OpenTelemetry. So, uh, there is this concept about uh, instrumentation library. An instrumentation library is a wrapper around another library to make it generate telemetry data. So the open telemetry community is trying to implement these instrumentation libraries for the most popular libraries in different languages. So users are able to get some tracing information from those libraries. So basically the instrumentation library what it does is to wrap the original library and to start the spans before performing the operation on the original uh, implementation. This uh, is an example of Python. So these instrumentation libraries are available as packages in the different languages. So for instance, we are going to use the request. Request is a library for performing HTTP uh, requests. And there is the instrumentation library for that is called OpenTelemetry instrumentation request. Mm, we can import the instrument instrumentor for that library and then we ins we instrument the library. So here we are enable the instrumentation in the request library. Then if we perform any operation using that library, we will have some telemetry data coming from those operations. Okay, so I already show you how to use the OpenTelemetry API to create, to start the spans. I show you also how to use the instrumentation libraries to enable the instrumentation in third party libraries. So we have all these spans, all this information, but somehow we have to export this to a remote uh, system for processing or analyzing. So the exporters are these components that send the traces to a remote system for processing, analyzing, or, or storage. Or the open telemetry specification requires the different implementations to have support for Jaeger, Zipkin, and the open telemetry collector. Those are like the uh, like the exporters that are mandatory to have. But of course, there are many other exporters available. Uh, in vendor specific reports. So there are exporters for Azure, GCP, Datadog, Lightstep, and so on. Most of the important companies have support for this. And this is really amazing about OpenTelemetry that uh, there are already compatibility with many different vendors. And if you are using a vendor and you, and you want to change the vendor, the only thing that you will have to do is to change the, the exporter. Uh, what I was saying about vendor lock is exactly this. So if you already have the instrumentation done with open telemetry, you can change the vendor just by uh, swapping the exporter. You don't have to worry about changing the instrumentation code and so on. This is an example in Python about how to use the Jaeger exporter. So we import the Jaeger exporter. We import some glue code that is called a spam processor we create an instance of the Jigger exporter. In this case, we only need to pass a service name, a host name, and the port with the 
agent is running. If you are using a paid service, probably will have to also pass a token here. It depends on each particular uh, exporter. And then once we have the instance of the exported, we can attach that instance to open telemetry by using a, a spam processor. Okay, let me show you a demonstration about how to instrument an application using open telemetry. I'm going to show you a simple uh, demonstration that is composed by two different applications. So we have a client application and the server application. What this application does is that the user pass a country and the application replies what continent is this country in. So the client pass the request to an HTTP server and the HTTP server uses a, a database to get this information. The only important point about this architecture is that I want to show you how different components interact together and how to enable the instrumentation libraries for these, the HTTP client, HTTP server libraries, also for the DB library. Okay, so let me switch to this. So G I have Jaeger running locally. Uh, this is running locally. We go here, there are not any traces yet. So let me show you the code of the application before. So this is the client application. So here we have the imports for the open telemetry components. So here we are importing the open telemetry API and here we are importing the SDK. We are also performing the ports related to the exporters and we are importing the different instrumentation libraries here. So in the client we are only only going to use this request library and we are importing the instrumenter for that library. Here we set up the open telemetry framework. So the first thing that we have to do is to tell the API what is the SDK implementation we are going to use. So in this case, we are going to use the uh, standard, the default open telemetry SDK implementation. We create the Jaeger Sparter instance, we set, we connect that to open telemetry, and then we enable the instrumentation in the request library. Uh, later we get an instance of a tracer, and this is all the code for the setup of open telemetry. Here is the real code of the application. So what we do here is to create a new span that we call query HTTP service. Uh, we create the span and then we perform the request to the server. For the ones that are not familiar with Python, what it does is that uh, once this code block ends, the span is automatically ends. So we don't have to worry about calling the start and the end functions. And this is done automatically by the OpenTelemetry Python implementation. The server code is more or less the same. We have the same import for the API and for the SDK, also for, for the exporter. What is different here is that we have different parts for the libraries used in the, using the server. So we have this Flask library that is an HTTP server and we have this library to connect to the database. All the setup is is the same. In this case, we call the instrument, we enable the instrumentation for these two libraries too. Uh, here we create an instance of the server, the HTTP server. Here we create a connection to the DB. And this is the code of the application. So this is the function that handles the HTTP request. We create a new span in this case we set we set an attribute on a span we save the country the user is asking for in the in the span and then we just secure the query to the DB and we return the result to the user. So let's take a look how it works. So I'm going to start the server. Okay so the server is running and I'm going to perform some calls to to the server. So let's do this with Colombia, Italy, and so on. So I perform three different calls. So let's go to, to Jigger. So if we refresh the page, if we click here, we can see that now we have traces for three different services. So for instance, if we select the client service, 
if we go here, we have the three different traces. So each of these traces is representing a, an operation. This is for a different country in this case. So if we go here, we can see the full representation of the transaction. We can see that the blue one refers to the client and the pink one refers to the server. And we can see the different spans here. So for instance, this query HTTP service was the span we were manually generating. And we can see here some information about the span. This is some information that is automatically introduced by open telemetry. This span, this HTTP GET span, is the one created automatically in the request library because we enable the instrumentation for that library. And in this case, we can get information about the HTTP request itself. So for instance, what is what was the method used, the URL, the status code, and so on. If we go to this query DB, we can see here that we set the country attribute. So we can see how this, this information is exported to Jigger2. Uh, other information useful for this is that we can see the different time that the operations took. So we could see that the full operation took something like uh, 14 milliseconds. We can see here that the getting the continent and the, the server took 5 milliseconds. Querying the DB took 1 millisecond and the internal query on the DB took almost, yes, almost also 1 millisecond. Okay, so let me switch back to the presentation. Let me show you, uh, the, let me tell you about automatic instrumentation. So this is not possible to have all the applications or all, all the libraries instrumented. Mm, one reason is that all applications doesn't include support for open telemetry. So there are some all applications that are not updated anymore. So they don't support open telemetry. Mm, there is also the case that are new applications that also don't, su don't support open telemetry because the developer decided not to support it. And the third and maybe the most powerful mm, reason is that this is difficult and this is costly to add manual instrumentation to a large application. So you have to go to the, the whole code of the application to create this expansion and so on. So this is very time consuming and costly. So the idea about the automatic instrumentation is to do this manually, the, to do this automatically, sorry. So how? If we instrument the most popular libraries in the different programming languages and we enable that instrumentation of those libraries and runtime automatically, the application will generate some telemetry coming from those libraries. So the idea is that there is no any instrumentation code in the application in the application itself, but there is instrumentation code that is enabled automatically on the libraries that the application is using. So we are able to get some telemetry data from those some telemetry data from those libraries. The open telemetry has this concept of agents. So an agent is an application that automatically enables instrumentation on the libraries and runtime. This is an application that is executed before the real application. And yes, according to the programming language, you use different techniques to enable the instrumentation at runtime. For, for instance, in Python, we have this open telemetry instrument that is the agent in Python, and then we pass the program. So in this case, this application is going to enable the instrumentation for the libraries that the program is used, and program will generate some telemetry data. So let me show you a demo about that. So this is the same code of the previous application, but in this case, there is not any instrumentation available. This is just one thing we have to do here is to configure the exporters. We still have to configure the exporters in the code of the application. This for sure is not the ideal solution, but this is something we are working on to improve. So in the future, you should be able to do this without even configuring the exporter in the code of the application. So if you see here, the only thing we are doing related to OpenTelemetry is to configure the exporter. 
and here we don't have any information about span. So here we are not creating any information. On, we are not creating any span nor enabling the instrumentation for the libraries we are using. The same happened in the server case. We are only configuring the uh, exporters, but we don't have, we are not creating and we don't have any spans here, right? So let me show that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to another folder with the application with, with the call we with our instrumentation. I'm going to execute that. So this is executed almost in the same way. The only thing that I have is to I have to append this open telemetry instrument command before. Oh, there is a typo there. Here we go. Okay, so what happens here is that this application is enabling the instrumentation libraries that my server is importing and using. Let me do the same here. And once more. Okay, let's go to Jigger. So if we refresh the Jigger page, we are able to see that there are three new traces that were generated some seconds ago. So if we go to some of the traces, we are able to get something like a general overview of what is going on. What is the difference with the previous case? We have less spans. In the previous one, we have five. In this one, we have three because in this case the application is not generating any spans but all those spans are coming from the uh, libraries that the application is using so yes anyway we are able to see to have some information about what is going on and what are the operations that are performed by those uh, libraries this is just the same as before we have the same information as before so the interesting point here is that we don't have to include any instrumentation on the library and where we are still able to get information from the libraries okay so if you want to get more information about open telemetry observability and distributed tracing you can go to these links i will publish you a link with these slides so I think this is all. Thank you very much, very much for your attention. If you want to get the slides, those are available on this link. And if you want to get the call for the demonstration, this is also available on this rip. Thank you.